Hello, good day. In my previous videos, I have discussed some key portfolio and asset pricing theories. From the modern portfolio theory in 1952 to the CAPM in mid-60s. Today, I will move to the 1970s by introducing to you another influential theory in asset pricing, the arbitrage pricing theory. Let's find out together what is APT and how APT can be applied in asset pricing. Stay tuned. In 1976, Stephen Ross developed the arbitrage pricing theory. He proposed a multi-factor approach to explain the pricing of assets. Before we move into the details of APT, let's take some time to understand the concept of arbitrage. Then you will be able to appreciate why the model developed by Stephen Ross is called APT. According to the definition of Bode, Kane and Marcus in 2011, arbitrage is the exploitation of security mispricing in such a way that risk-free profits can be earned. According to Herschel and Nossinger in 2010, arbitrage is simply the simultaneous buying and selling of the same asset at different prices to capture a mispricing. The law of one price state that two equivalent assets should have the same market price. An arbitrage opportunity would arise if the same assets are sold for different prices at two different locations. The law of one price is enforced by arbitrages. They will take advantage of prices in this equilibrium. Arbitrager will buy the asset where it is cheap and sell where it is high. Through this arbitrage mechanism, price will move back to equilibrium. An arbitrage opportunity arises when an investor can earn riskless profits without making a net investment. Theoretically, by selling short, the investor can use the proceeds from the short sale to buy long, and therefore, the transaction can be made without any investment. This makes the transaction a no-cost riskless transaction. The APT is a theory for explaining stock returns based on the sensitivity to a variety of risk factors. It assumes a linear model. The return on an investment can be explained by more than one factor. According to APT, a market is perfectly efficient if it is not possible to earn a risk-free arbitrage profit by simultaneously buying and selling the same assets. The APT contends that there are many factors that affect return, in contrast to the CAPM where the only relevant risk is beta. The APT does not say what the factors are. For example, a company's stock return may be affected by changes in oil price. Most transportation companies, such as airlines, would have a negative sensitivity to a change in oil price. Some stocks will be more sensitive to a particular factor than other stocks. For example, oil company could be more sensitive to an oil factor than consumer industry. The APT is a more generalized model than the CAPM and less restrictive in its assumptions. There are five assumptions listed here. This slide shows the APT model. In this formula, the actual return on asset is calculated. ER stands for expected return. F is a set of common factors that influence the return on asset. Beta is the sensitivity of the factor on the asset's return. E is a random error term. Here, the formula shows that APT is a stochastic process generating asset return that can be expressed as a linear function of a set of risk factors. 
the APT can also be expressed in terms of expected risk premium. Expected risk premium is the actual return minus risk-free rate. Here, APT states that the expected risk premium on a stock should depend on the expected risk premium associated with each factor and the stock sensitivity to each of the factors. Let's apply the formula of APT in this example. What is your answer? The answer is C. Let's try another example. Here we have portfolio A and B. What would you do? If you want to take advantage of an arbitrage opportunity, you should take a short position in portfolio B and a long position in A. Why is that so? Because A is undervalued and B is overvalued when they are exposed to the same risk factor F. Thank you. I hope you can understand this session. See you and goodbye.